What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now, I gotta say, I do apologize. I know I said the other day I was gonna go ahead and grind out some infantry gameplay, but I just couldn't help it. The game is absolutely awful. The hit detection is disgusting. The performance is absolute crap. I can't play infantry in 2042. So, yes, yeah, so once again, we're gonna be having a little bit more Nightbird gameplay. At the end of this clip, actually, I got two pretty decent K30 clips. So I got a little bit of infantry mixed in here, but uh, as you already know, the majority of the gameplay is just strictly going to be Nightbird clips. Also, if you guys do want to see any of this gameplay live and in action, I'm going to be streaming pretty much every single day this week, uh, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, so about two hours after this video goes live, and we end the stream around 4 p.m. Eastern Time. So if you want to check out any Battlefield 2042, if you want to rant with me, complain about the game with me, or even see these bugs unfold before your very eyes, I know a lot of people still don't believe that every game I join is completely dead at launch. Everybody says, oh, you're lying, you get full matches, just come into stream and see for yourself. But ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be discussing something pretty positive when it comes to the whole Battlefield community. I know, oh my goodness, JB, a positive commentary? Is this a fake video? Is this, is this a fake channel now? Is he being held hostage? No, no, actually, for once... Uh, something positive going on in the whole Battlefield community. Now, this information could be taken one of two ways. Like I said, either positive, like how I'm going to list it out, or you could take it completely negatively. And honestly, I can see both sides, and even though I'm going to be giving my positive feedback about this article here, I'm also going to be listing some negatives as well, nearing the end of the video, because obviously there's two sides to every story. Now, if you have been following my channel for a while, you probably already know this, but if you haven't watched me and you're brand new to this channel, first off, welcome. Hopefully, you want to go ahead and subscribe and stay tuned for more uploads. I upload daily over here. But also to fill you in, basically, the main cause of this game's failure is management. Apparently, every single developer who works over at DICE is being put under a lot of pressure because no matter what creative concept they come up with, it's not good enough for the top dogs or the, you know, the head developers, the management who work over at DICE. And basically, those people who are the head developers are extremely egotistical. They think all of their concepts and all of their ideas are correct and amazing. And again, like I said earlier, no matter what concept any of these developers come up with, it's completely ignored, neglected, and thrown away. And that right there is why this game failed so horribly, because you have to understand, when you go into a creative field, like game development, you can't have one person completely in charge over the whole project when there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of individuals with their own minds their own design concepts their own creativity who are trying to improve the game and then you ignore all of that feedback you see to make a game you need all of those minds working together equally on their own departments and working in sync to make sure the project turns out good no wonder the game turned out like crap because none of the developers are passionate about it because it's not the game they wanted to make but, here's the good news right here, even through all of this crap that these developers are pushing through to try to get their, you know, words and getting their opinions and ideas actually listened to, apparently, Tom Henderson put this over on Twitter, over 60,000 words of feedback from 350 team members has been provided to EA on the opportunities and challenges surrounding Battlefield 2042's development. There have been 25 workshops over the past three weeks to receive in-person feedback. This right here, that's very crucial, in-person feedback. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, it doesn't really matter, but it truly does. Big corporations like EA, Activision, I, I mention this all the time, especially when you try to go through their customer support and customer service and stuff like that. It's impossible to actually get to them. To speak to a legitimate human being, someone who actually knows what they're doing, is nearly impossible. So if these developers were going to go ahead and, you know, send all of their opinions and thoughts through mail or something corny like that, uh, the people at EA could say, oh, yeah, 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 that's cool. Yep, yep, yeah, whatever. Okay, yeah, 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 move on, you know, and not listen to a single thing they say. But if they're in person, they have the ability to speak face to face, which means you can, you know, make eye contact, you can show examples, and you can prove your point 10 times better. And at the same time, you can know if EA is actually listening to you or if they're ignoring the developers. Now, I do have a feeling that some of you are probably thinking, why is this important? Why does this matter? And why should I care at all? You know, who cares about what the developers have to say about anything? You know, they're the ones who went ahead and developed this piece of crap in the first place. What about the community? Why are they focusing more on them 
compared to focusing on us, the people who play this game on the regular, the people who love the whole franchise and play other games on the regular. There's still people who play Battlefield 4 religiously, Battlefield 1 religiously, Battlefield 5 religiously. People love the franchise. There are so many OGs and so many goats in here that could easily tell you what is wrong with 2042. Why not go to those individuals? And I completely understand that point. I truly do. But you have to understand, the reason this game flopped is not because of the developers, but because of management. There are tons of extremely talented developers who work over at DICE that know exactly what they're doing, and they know exactly what path this game is supposed to take. But again, because they have such an egotistical asshole at the lead role of this development team, all of their feedback and all of their knowledge goes to absolute waste. So, yes, this is fantastic news because these individuals know how to fix this game. And if EA, instead of going to the managers to rely on information about this title, go directly to the source, the developers who are truly working on the nitty and gritty parts of the game, they could get better information to understand what they need to do, what steps they need to take to go forward, and how to polish off the title. You see, EA, they don't care about game development, they don't care about game design, they don't care about any of that stuff. They only care about the amount of money they're going to bring in, and also their investors. That's about it. So you have to understand, if management tells EA that the game's in an absolute awful spot, not only will these managers probably make less money, but at the same time, they'll probably get in massive trouble. So instead of accepting their L and taking a loss of income or taking, you know, uh, obviously negative feedback from EA to the developers and the management and stuff like that, instead of doing that, management lies. They tell EA exactly what they want to hear, so then EA can go ahead and relay that back to the investors, so on, so forth. And since the majority of the top dogs at EA probably have never touched a video game in their whole life, they won't be able to experience the game. They won't be able to see how bad it is, how poorly it performs and stuff like that. They could give two craps. They will take the management's word and they'll move on. And because of this, the game will never see fixes. But luckily for us, the community isn't stupid. We fought back. We made it widely noticed. And now EA knows. And like I said, they're going directly to the developers. And again, like I said... You can take it any way you want. To me personally, this is fantastic news because the developers aren't bad. They know how to make a Battlefield game. And if these developers can voice their opinions, be heard, and possibly make good changes, you never know. The future of this game might turn around completely. But here is the problems I'm running into. Like I said, there's always going to be some negatives as well. Will EA and will management listen to these developers? They have been stubborn for so many years. We have seen so many horrible changes come into Battlefield, and we have seen nothing but a decline when it comes to the franchise. Do you really think that even though they have listened to so many 300 plus developers, to be exact, I think it said 350 developers they were listening to, uh, a lot of feedback. Do you guys think they're actually going to go ahead and go through with this, listen to their feedback, and make the changes that need to be made to make the game better? Or do you think they're just going to abandon the game, abandon all hope, and save as much money as they possibly can? I mean, let's be real here. This game uh, made them a ton of money. This is what, I think, either their second best launch, their first or second best launch they have ever had in a Battlefield title. And even though the game is extremely hated right now, that doesn't take anything away from the fact that they made their initial money from, you know, the first initial sales when everybody got clickbaited by the trailers. So in all reality, they made the money they wanted to make. Clearly, they were, you know, estimated for more because they want microtransactions and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, they could totally probably leave this game, completely ditch it, and still come out positive when it comes to the income they made off the product. So it really makes you think, are they actually going to go ahead and completely overhaul this game and do massive changes that the community is asking for? Or are they just going to stick to tiny little bugs and, you know, tiny little glitches and tiny little fixes here and there to polish off the game to make it run better? Because like I said, they can make it run better, but I think the majority of the community is more pissed off than just bugs and glitches. They're pissed off at the overall atmosphere of this game and how it doesn't feel like a Battlefield title. It's going to take a lot more than just bugs and glitches to be fixed to make this game turn out overall good and to bring a lot of people back and again with that being said it's going to take a lot of money to do that as well but even if ea decides not to go ahead and invest into this project and make battlefield 2042 better at the end of the day if you're a hardcore battlefield fan luckily we're lucky enough that all the old school classics are still populated and it doesn't matter what platform you're on it's not like call of duty where if you're on console it's dead and pc it's alive no it doesn't matter where you're at if you own one of these copies of a game like Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, uh, Battlefield 1, Battlefield 5, 
you can find lobbies. I mean, shoot, even Bad Company 2 is still extremely populated when it comes to PC. So if you do want to play any of these classics and you want to revisit the good days and see what a good Battlefield game is actually all about, then by all means, go revisit one of those games. I promise you, you will not regret it. And every single time I log into one of those experiences, especially Battlefield 4, I have an absolute blast. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, bonus, I hate it, leave a dislike. Also, if you're brand new, enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. Also, if you want to chat me, there's two ways to do so. I have a Twitter and a Discord, both of them down in the description. And also, if you want to catch me live streams on video games and over on Twitch, link that's in the description as well. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. See you all next one. Peace out.